Hi, and welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Uh, this is Lucas, and I have Anna, who is not in frame because she has the figure in frame, and Christian. I'm here. She's back What's behind up? the camera. I'll see so, you later. So tonight, we decided to throw Anna a bone and, uh, and feature uh, some third-party legends, even though... Christian and I are not into, or I, I'm no longer into third party legends just because it got to be too much with the, um, you know, Earthrise and Siege and all that kind of stuff that uh, I, I decided, you know, that I'm just going to stick to stick to Hasbro and, and not go with legends. But, uh, but Anna's still chugging along here. So, and she wanted to feature a, uh, f a figure from Magic Square, which is. The uh, Magic Square um, voice ripple. Is that right, I think? That is correct. Oh, uh, you're moving it too close now. It's not all the way in yeah, frame. Yeah, I'm adjusting anymore. him. He doesn't need to be all in frame. You Oops. need to see his face first. He's saying hi. Okay, sure. All right. Well, I guess this is your show, Anna. So so go, go ahead. Let, let us know uh, what you think here. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the Magic Square voice ripple, as we said, and it's Soundwave, and it, it is exactly what you would expect from being Soundwave, that it looks like Soundwave. So this is a figure that I think, gosh, this was announced about last year, right? I think we really started seeing decent ones, because I know they had the prototypes at TFCon last October. Of yeah, success. I think it was announced at one of the TF cons. I can't remember if it was Toronto or um, what was it? DC was it last year? The fall show, I think. Um, yeah, I think so. So yeah, like I, um, yeah, that was right because we all went. Anna, you were there. I was Christian there, too, so and I saw the prototypes, and I was very impressed by the cassettes. So I've been very excited for this guy because I think that, you know, Soundwave's one of one of those characters I just want a good one of. And I've always really liked the cassettes because they're small and, you know, clever and kind of fun. So I was very excited for the release of this figure. And if you follow Legends, you might know that um, New Age has posted pictures and ideas about their sound wave as well. So it's kind of like, you know, the usual between those two companies that people are trying to decide which one they like better between the two sound waves. This one just happened to come out first. So therefore it automatically wins type of deal. Um, so yeah, that's basically the story of this guy. He just recently came out. I think I got mine a little bit late because I ordered him through a um, retailer from China, and he took a long time to get here, as things are tending to right now, which is fine. He's here. That's all that matters. Well, I mean, in general, I mean, I, I don't necessarily know that we get the... If you ordered from China, it probably wouldn't be that much later than like some of the North American retailers getting in, in stock. Um, I know on a lot of these, like we end up ordering from Robo Toy Base, which is based in Hong Kong. And we're actually a lot of times able to get the figure before, you know, like the uh, TF Source or Chosen Prime or Big Bad or whatever is able to get them a lot of times. Now their shipping is a little bit funky right now just because of, you know, the world climate. Um, so, ironically, I think China is, like, able to ship, but Hong Kong is having some trouble, I think. Is that right? Or are their air shipments uh, good now? I'm not updated on this. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know either. I know for a while, like, that Tony was having some trouble, like, shipping stuff out. So, um, but yeah, so... Nevertheless, um, a lot of the times, if you order right away from China, like a lot of times you'll get it in a similar time frame that a North American retailer would get it. But it's kind of dependent on how customs go. Um, yeah. You know, like if you're lucky and things go, you know, fly through customs like pretty quick, you can get it in a in a week or two. Um, if it doesn't, then you know it might be a month. Or two. Yeah, this took a month to get to me from the time that it actually shipped out. So it was a, it was a long wait, unfortunately. But that's okay because it's, you know, 
it's what I was waiting for, so it's it's totally fine. So I guess just to get to the figure, you know, this is from Magic Square, which I think I've kind of gained a reputation on the show as some sort of unapologetic Magic Square fangirl. Um, I think I, I, I really do tend to like Magic Square figures for reasons that people often disagree with me on, is that they're very, like, they're very, like, G1 Sunbow animation looking. They're very, like, washed out and simplistic in their presentation, and they're, you know, small and those sorts of things. And I think the sound wave kind of fits that bill pretty well. Um, I'm going to move him a little bit closer to the camera so you can see, like, his face a little bit. I think this well, is pretty much par for the course for them as far as the presentation. I know for me personally, it's not like I, I think that the the look of the figures is fine. Um, you know, I, I obviously want like paint details, and I know sometimes they're missing uh, a little bit of that. Um, my biggest issue, just in general, with Magic Square is the plastic, which it's a different kind of plastic than like everybody else. Like I don't know what other stuff they're manufacturing in that factory, but. They have this like nylon kind of bendy, bendable plastic almost, which actually, I mean, I think it, it can kind of work well for Legends because like it's really hard to break that plastic. Like you're not going to shatter anything. But my question is because I've heard, um, I think it was Chefatron, um, he actually broke this figure. Um, when he was transforming. So my question is, is like the blue plastic, is that actually a different kind of plastic or is it that same nylon? Um, it feels like the same nylon to me. Huh. To the touch. I think. I haven't studied it explicitly. It might be a slightly smoother plastic now that I touch it, but I'm not really certain about that. I think it's the same stuff though. I, I know exactly how this thing broke, though. Like, it was the waist, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, so this thing has two really bad joints on it. One is the neck. The neck is a tiny... Let me move his head up a little bit so you can see it. Let me see if I can break it on camera here. When it be your first. <laughs> right. There you go. Your first when it spike. So his neck is on a ball joint on a very, very thin peg. So that can break pretty easily, I found out, because it feels super fragile when I rotate his head. His head does have to rotate to transform him, so it's a little bit scary. The other scary joint is, put your head back, and hopefully it doesn't break on camera. Um, the other scary joint is he has two points of waist articulation, and one of them is kind of on this inside part, like this lower piece here. And that you have to rotate all the way around to transform them as well. Yeah. And that is really, really weak feeling when you transform them, unfortunately. So that felt like I was really scared that I was going to break it when I transformed them both directions, unfortunately. And I kind of made the decision not to ever transform them again. I can post some pictures of his cassette mode afterwards, but I just, that wasn't very comfortable. So I'll just say like, you know, the, the finish on this guy, he looks really good. He looks like most of Magic Square's figures. I think he's a little more painted and a little more detailed than a lot of them are. <clears throat> I would say. Um, I think that, you know, he has the same kind of weird plastic, the same kind of washed out colors. It's really no surprises if you collect Magic Square figures. He, to me, as compared to, you know, other versions of Soundwave you can get, he looks second best compared to the um, to the MP. I think he looks better than, you know, most of the mainline offerings. He definitely has a better self-presentation than this little guy, if anybody remembers the DX9 version. Um, he is very okay. But this one is definitely a huge improvement on mm -hmm. that one. So I'm, you know, I'm really happy with the way it looks in this mode. It's articulated. The hands move. He also has replacement hands. Um, new Age, or new, not New Age, but Magic Square has kind of hideous hands sometimes. And they keep it up with this one. He has, like, some big, flat, pointy hands. He has the usual hands um, 
pretty much the same as they always do with their figures these days, which is nice because that means he comes with, I think, two different pairs of hands that are extra. But unfortunately, I was not able to finagle his arm to do the iconic pressing his own button pose. Oh, now I can. There we go. Close enough. <laughs> He's kind of doing it. So you can do that well enough. Now that I played with it a little bit more, that was just a joint that didn't pop before. So he's really well articulated, and that's just kind of something that like you assume when you buy a Magic Square figure. What you don't assume when you buy a Magic Square figure is that they're going to be really wobbly, unfortunately. And the motion's not tracking super well on my camera, but his legs are really wobbly. Well, and that's one of the uh, things, too, that I've noticed just in the groups um, that... It, it seems like with Magic Square, just in general, that their tolerance is like, it can really vary from figure to figure. And I think part of it is kind of with that plastic, like with the pins and, and whatever. And I'm sure you could probably put some future in or something. But um, that one person will get it and they'll say, oh, this is fantastic. Like the tolerances are absolutely perfect and whatnot. And then another person gets their copy and it's loose or it's tight or you know whatever and so it does seem a little bit like that you know i i don't know what it is if it's if it's qc or if it's you know whatever just that their tolerances are a little bit like kind of variable like um so absolutely i'd say people are getting really heated actually because some people have just been like this is junk its tolerances are so crappy its legs are so floppy that other people will defend it, and I've been seeing that as well. Mine is floppy. It's not terrible. He stands up just fine. He's just really floppy when you kind of mess with him and play with him a little bit. The one thing I would say kind of upset me with the tolerances and stuff is very similar to their Prime, if anybody got the Legends Prime from mm -hmm. a while back. Um, yeah. He comes apart a lot when you transform him. Like, just like the, the lower parts of his arms like to pop off, his legs like to pop off. He just likes to pop apart. In fact, his um, his waist assembly entirely came off multiple times during transformation. So that was a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, the um, and I don't know. I, I'm I'm curious with this figure too. If you know that they are concerned about New Age coming out with theirs, and that they're like, all right, crap, like we need to get this thing out because th they were late to the game with their seekers. And New Age just kind of trounced them with, with those just because they came out first and whatnot. Um, so I, I just wonder if maybe that they're like, you know what, like, screw it, ship it, you know, whatever, or or what it what it is. But, I mean, I don't know. That seems, that seems disappointing to me just because, like, I know I had the DX9 um, Optimus Prime, which I know it's different than Magic Square, but the DX9 one had a big issue with its legs popping off, like, with Transformation. And it annoyed that, like, it wasn't a big thing. Like, you could just pop the leg back on and whatever. But it just just annoyed me that that it did that. Um, so. Yeah, I agree. That kind of, it kind of ruined the figure for you, if I remember. And my Magnus of theirs does the same thing. And it just means I don't play with it. <laughs> Which is a bummer, because it's actually a decent figure otherwise. It's not half bad. So and this, is a, this one, I just really didn't enjoy the transformation. Like it was, it was a sound wave transformation. It was what you would expect. It was pretty standard. Um, it's probably very close to how the Earthrise is going to transform. It's very close to how the MP transforms. It's very close to how the DX9 one transforms. Um, but it just, it fell apart so many times on me. It was such an annoyance. Yeah. And I will show some pictures later of the um, cassette mode. But somehow it manages to look bad. And I don't really know how you get a rectangle to look bad. <laughs> but it doesn't look good. So it's a bummer. Yeah. I mean, again, like, the figure looks really good. I mean, you can sit there looking at it. And, you know, I know, again, like, with the Hasbro sound wave that, um, you know, there's some gaps in them and whatnot. Um, and then, of course, if you get the Siege one, it has all the, the battle damage and, and whatnot that people are annoyed by. Um, 
you know. However, there are upgrade kits that you can to kind of fix the the Hasbro one. But like, I mean, so so he looks great. I mean, and it, it sounds like that you know, on on your shelf that you know, if you just want a a Legends representation and you want it to go along <coughs> with your Megatron and and whatever uh, and and your sound or Starscream that you got, like you know, he'll he'll do that and he'll be a good action figure, but. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of feel like with Legends figures, like, I want my Legend figures to be able to transform and be fun and all that kind of thing. It seems like you kind of missed the mark there. For me, yeah. I, a lot of people have really praised this figure, like, continuously, and I think it really just does come down to the QC thing. I Mine is pretty fragile, and that's kind of a bummer. Um, I think I'll probably... As more and more pictures come out of the red figures, like I was really excited for the red figures, I was thinking like, ooh, I should just get rid of this thing and get the red. But now that I'm looking at it more, I kind of think this looks better than the red. So I think I might just keep this one. Plus he comes with really fantastic sets, which I do have to talk about a little bit, um, which really helps him out as well. But I think, you know, he might just be, like you said, an action figure sound wave for me because he's not much of a transformer for me. Your mileage may vary, though. Like, just look at the pic. If you're interested in this figure, look at the pictures of the alt mode and see if it's going to bother you. Because if you if you don't give a crap about turning your sound wave into a rectangle, which how many of us have transformed their MP sound waves since they bought them? <laughs> uh, once. I did mine once. I did mine once. Twice? Look at you. Twice, yeah. Yeah, I've... Funny. I've transformed them two or three times. Um, I don't know. I mean, that Masterpiece Soundwave is just... Man, that's such a good figure. Such an it, impressive toy. Totally. It's, it's one of those ones where I, you know, kind of... You know, I, I end up buying it back just because it's it's such a nice, you know, a really great figure. And so, I mean, I think, like, and I know you, you're a... Uh, or, you know, I know you like to only have one per character or whatnot, right? So, are you thinking about just keeping the masterpiece, or are you going to stick with with this one, or are you just going to have a, uh, multiples? Um, so, I've been letting myself have a sound wave of each skull. So, I've been letting myself have an MP sound wave and a legend sound wave. So, I'm definitely getting rid of the DX9 guy. Yeah. Um, mine's the knockoff anyway, so whatever. Because he was hard <laughs> to find for a little while. Um because he's just he's not great you know he's very okay he has we all know how anna feels about hollowness on figures and he has ultimate hollow legs so i don't like him and that's fine um so i'll definitely get rid of him i am probably going to keep my i have um the sound blaster the new sound wave as i like to call him i have him from siege so I'll probably keep him to be the Sound Blaster representation. And right now I'm leaning towards kind of just having these both, you know, this and the MP. But if someone were to offer me a purchase for just the sound wave and I get to keep the rumble, I would definitely say yes, because they just don't. The sound wave doesn't excite me super a lot. <laughs> just because I can't transform without feeling like I'm going to break them. And I'm the same way with their prime. So if you own the prime and you're thinking, you know, well, I think that's fine. I didn't have any trouble with it. You'll probably love this too. It's all good. See, I never, um, the prime, you know, other than I had that, that issue with the glue that I was an idiot, but like, um, I never thought it was going to break or anything like that on, on me. Um, I actually thought the prime was, was pretty solid for the most part. Like, I think that there are some tolerances that could have been loose. Uh, and the smokestacks annoyed me to no end because they're removable and mine would fall off and, and whatever. Um, but, uh, glued them. but yeah, and I glued them because I'm a moron. And so I, um, it, I had to end up getting a new copy of it because I, you know, glued mine in place. So I couldn't transform it after that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like when I got the second copy and whatnot, like I, I thought it was completely solid. Um, but like, if you're saying that the, if the ball pegs, um, cause I believe the, um, the legs are on ball pegs as, as well. Right. On this one. Yeah. And so, like, the ball pegs, I think that that was the one, that's where uh, Cheftron, his broke. And then if you're saying that the head is fragile as well, 
Um, you know, I don't know. That's that's just cause kind of disappointing. I don't know. I mean, like, not that... I don't feel like I break a lot of figures, but, like, I still want them to be able to... Like, I don't want to have to worry about it. And I know, like, like that Masterpiece Hound is, like, a good example of one where I've seen a ton of people break it. And, um... Or not a ton, but I've seen it broken. And so, like, I know I didn't even transform yours all the way just because I was so freaked out about, um, about breaking it. And so, like, I don't know. That's, I just don't like that on, on figures. Like, if I have to worry about breaking something. No, I agree with you. I, I feel the same way. If I'm worried about breaking it, it really makes me stressed. Like, I, I love Hound. He's really good, but I don't mess with him ever. Like, mine has not broken, just like this guy has not broken right. for me. I've had no problems with them breaking. I just feel it happening in, like, the future. <laughs> I just worry that I'm going to break it so I don't mess with it as much. Right. But I guess, like, I do want to talk about the two cassettes he comes with. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the stars of the show, like, I feel like we're kind of, like, you know, just biding our time with the guy that... Now, again, like I said, like, I, I, I think that this guy looks cool. Like, I like the fact that he doesn't... I mean, he really looks like Soundwave. He has a great-looking representation. Um, it's definitely, like, you can tell, like you had mentioned before about the DX9 one um, or, or the knockoff. Like, the DX9 one was from, like, when Legends first came out. And yeah. I think that the original price on it was, like, what, 20 bucks or something like that? Or 25 something around there. And it came with, like, all the tapes. So it was, it was a, a pretty decent deal. But you can definitely tell with that, like, the upgrade on the new one. I mean, you just put them side by side and, you know, the huge ball joints, the gaps in the back. Like, you you can just tell, like, the new one has a lot more, you know, parts and all that. So you can definitely see that I think the new one is, I think, is it 45 or 50 uh, retail at U.S. sites? Uh, it's a yeah, little bit cheaper that. if you get it. If you get it in China, I think it might be a little bit cheaper i think show z had it for 48 but like so but i mean you can de definitely tell that you know it's they've increased the quality uh of the figure so and this guy is massive that's another thing to keep in mind about him like he's a really big sound wave he here's him next to the new age megatron which i would say you know it's just an excellent megatron <laughs> and he's you know he's bigger than the megatron Megatron, the new Megatron is a pretty big figure. He's bigger than Megatron is. Now, if that's, like, I mean, they're close in size in G1 anyway, so I think it's fine for him to be bigger, but he's definitely larger. Yeah. Oh, so, and also, he's a lot larger than on Magic Square's Blaster. That's a real bummer. Which is, that's very frustrating. You know, because, like, I don't know. It's the it's the same company. So, uh, but I, I think that New Age kind of in, um, increased the size on some of their figures, and so I don't know if Magic Square felt the need to as well. I don't know how big the Megatron's going to be if it's if it's the same size or um, what. Yeah, I don't actually know either how big that's going to be. I'm gonna I'm gonna swing over and grab Blaster real fast. He is just out of my headphone reach. Um, I know, uh, just getting some, uh, questions in the chat. Uh, Tony was asking, like, do any of these Legends figures scale with, um, the Hasbro, like, Siege figures? Not really. I would say not really. <laughs> I mean, they're all too small. Even, like, the Insecticons, like, so the New Age Insecticons are very, very small. So, like, if you want tiny Insecticons... Um, they are, they're really nice figures, but they're, I mean, I, I just don't think they're going to scale with any of the Hasbro stuff. There's your blaster. <laughs> so there, there you go. So, and I Sean, uh, we're blaster with magic squares sound wave. I'm yeah, we're sorry. doing, we're doing magic square sound wave, Sean, if you're wondering. Yeah, this, when I, when I saw people sharing pictures of this comparison, I was just like, why? Why did they let this happen? Yeah. His blasts are so itty-bitty compared to Soundwave. That's really bizarre. But it's cruel. It is cruel. It is cruel, because this blaster is okay. Like, I, I don't love him, but I'm fine with him being my blaster. I think he's the only blaster I own right now. 
and I was fine with it. But now it's like, I need to go buy MFT's knockoff or something because it's bigger. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing is, is I feel like Magic Square scales a little bit wonky. Like I know their, um, <laughs> their Ultra Magnus was the same way where it was just like, it was totally non-scale with like anything else. Um, it was way too small. Yeah, it, it was way too small, and I ended up getting an MFT knockoff, and it actually looks better with everything else, which is ridiculous. Rick in the chat was asking, too, because we had touched on red earlier, the red line. Um, do you have any figures that you're really hoping to see in the red line? Hmm. Christian, you lead off. I'm excited for that knockout listing for sure. Yeah, me too, because Knockout only really got one figure, right? And it's not good. Oh, it's okay. I mean, it, it doesn't look like Knockout, so it'll be nice to have one that does. That's true. It looks close to Knockout. It's like a Knockout, pseudo Knockout. Uh, I'm going to say Beast Wars Death Charge. Ooh, that's a good one. I like it. It'd be nice to have one that isn't so, you know, wide back to front that's a fantastic looking cassette there and uh, look at that man yeah this is their rover so or whatever it's called was it scout fade christian name please auto help scout. auto scout thank you um i was like, where does this thing come from like i've seen it, several companies make it it's in an episode of g1 is it in just one episode okay or some episodes well here it is and it's a little and it's itty bitty and it, it doesn't have wheels its wheels are molded. It has its grapple arm that moves back and forth, and it transforms extremely simply. Um, so it fights back a little bit. Um. So, do the Hasbro tapes fit into that sound wave at all? Like the new Look ones? How little this tape is. If you want the answer to that question. <laughs> so. So no. It is itty bitty. I'll I mean, the Hasbro tapes own. are pretty small, but. Yeah, this is actually tiny compared to the Hasbro tapes. I don't know why my, my Rumble ran away. He used to be really close, but he, he went on a little trip. I'll grab him in a second to kind of show you just how much smaller these guys are than the um, Hasbro tapes. Looks about um, half the size of a Hasbro tape. I was gonna. I was gonna mention. Uh, Randall has some really good suggestions for the red line. Autobot X is a really good one. Uh, Rung is Wonderful. another one. Absolutely. Yeah. So all the action masters. Yeah. Um, Tony mentioned the uh, uh, the uh, Rack and Ruin. I think was another one that. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Who said that one? Tony. Tony. Nice job, Tony. Oh, That's and Tony cool. mentioned Autobot X as well. So. Um, uh, Autobot X is great. I'm going to throw Pretenders into the mix. Because you can make the shells, they don't have to transform, and then they look like the shells. Yeah, I don't know on the shells. Like, I'm curious if it'd be how that would work with the plastic and, and whatever. Like, But I don't know. Like They make those huge, like, you know, whatever, soap transformer things that have a ton of plastic in them so it seems like you could do the pretender shells somehow and uh, they don't have to so. be shells I mean I just want them to be solid figures they don't have to fit anything inside just uh -huh. I want them to exist okay I just wanted him a little bit closer so you could see his details so that is the the little person cassette we'll call him the purple one um, it's rumble I'm just going to call him rumble um, so yeah he comes with rumble or frenzy or whatever and this is like a preposterously detailed tidy toy this is like you know if you've seen the mmc right the mmc version of this guy is very impressive it's fully detailed he's got everything you would expect all the like details, Do you have on, the his masterpiece? Legs, all the details on his chest uh, i uh, don't i don't he's downstairs oh okay being sad this one's better anyway. The MMC is better detailing. No, I, I, I just just to have a size comparison. I can grab it in a second. I've got. It's not a I big deal. I can probably reach out of me with my foot, actually. <laughs> if only you guys could see my amazing acrobatics I just committed. 
Okay, so there is enemy. He cannot stand on a water bottle. He tried. And say so you could just hold them. I, I not the way I'm set up here. So there is enemy, and there is tiny, tiny rumble. Yeah, oh, wow. that is tiny, tiny. That is right. Tiny. So this is really, really, really small. <laughs> like it's just preposterous. Like I, you know that um, everybody likes to share that Ian Malcolm meme from Jurassic Park. The they spent too much time thinking about if they could do it. They didn't think about if they should. I feel like he's an excellent illustration of that because, I mean, you know, like. What do you do with a perfectly articulated rubble that's this small? Other than play with it. Like, it is a fantastic little toy, but it's, well, um, it's really preposterous. The, the only thing that annoys me about that whole thing is the fact that, like, you know, you compare that to what Hasbro did. And <clears throat> I know it's, it, it is 100% different. Like, these toys are more expensive and all that type of thing. So, like, the cost, like, you know, when you're spending 50 bucks on on this, and then they put them in a bunch of different sets and whatever that you have to spend a bunch of money on on sets. But then, like, it kind of annoys me because I'm like, man, like, Hasbro could have, you know, thrown a little more articulation in, in their MicroMaster cassettes. But... Yeah, because it's like, honestly, you know how many, how many deluxe figures... Do we talk about on the show where they have they have waist rotation, they have head movement, they have ankle tilt and ankle movement, they have no wrist swivel, and we say that they have excellent articulation because that's oh. exactly what this tidy guy has. Oh, I do, do want to mention like we don't necessarily know that Hasbro would have been able to pass the toy safety tests. You know, like if you get it that small, like I mean, they are selling toys to kids, so it it may have been an issue uh, with that potentially. But I don't know. I mean, they have headmasters, and and those are pretty small, so I I don't know exactly what all the rules are um, with that. But like that is one thing they do have to make sure that they would hold up for with kids and whatnot, uh, especially at that price point. So that's probably a big part of like why. It's not like that crazy articulated. Yeah, because he has this guy has the the chest details he needs to be rumble. His um little ween gun thingies they work as both weens and guns. They're reasonably detailed. They're not chromed, so if you really want them chromed, they're not. He is, you know, he's got the paint on his legs, and. He's got the chest details, and the face is okay. Um, I can't really get him close enough to the camera to show you his face, but it's not very detailed. It's a very kind of, like, simple face, which is fine, because his face is literally the size of, like, I don't even know what to compare it to. Like, the end of a pencil eraser? No, it's smaller than that. Um, it's very small. That's all I can say. His head is tidy. Somewhat impressive today, that good. they're able to paint his face. Like, I'm assuming he has eyes, right? So, he has a visor. Yeah. As he should. So oh, okay. he. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's painted. You know, the visor is red, and the the lower face is silver, and it looks fine. The sculpt is simplistic, but that's really fine, all things considered. That's that small. So I am really impressed by this. This is just like. Again, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it because I'm not going to sit around and play with it all the time because it's just a little too small. I'm not going to pose it and be like, look how impressive this looks on my shelf because you'll miss it. <laughs> so I don't really know what you do when you have a rumble this small, but since I really like rumble, I'm okay with it. Yeah, so my biggest issue with this whole set with the cassettes, right? is the fact that if I want all the cassettes, I have to buy the Sound Blaster. So like Laserbeak does not come with the Sound Wave, he comes with Sound Blaster. So then I have to buy Laserbeak, or I have to buy another $45 set in order to get that. 
Then, if I want the rest of them, like, you know, if I ha if I want Frenzy and I want, um, I'm trying to think who else is in the pack. There's another cassette pack. Frenzy, you know. Ravage, Rat Bat, and um, other bird. So, you know, and again, Plus, uh, like, there we go. you know, a lot of times the way that I collect is, is I'm in it to win it and I buy everything if I'm collecting a line. Um, so if it was Hasbro doing that, I probably wouldn't mind because I probably is going to get it all anyway. But it's still, it, it annoys me that they put that freaking laser beak with Sound Blaster. Like, you know, they should have, um, you know, I, I don't know. Like, the, the fact that they did it that way uh, so that you had to buy all of it, you know, I guess is a good business move, but it just... I, I don't know. For for me, I honestly like if this came with with laser beak and then say it came with that rumble and and whatever, like I might consider getting it for the price point, you know. But the fact that I had to buy all that stuff, I'm like, no, there's no way. Yeah, I think that's pretty logical not to get it for that reason. I mean, it's expensive. If you really wanted to buy all of it, you're talking 130 or so dollars to get the whole cassette set. It's a pretty good set, though. Like, I don't see the need for both Sound Blaster and Sound Wave, but the cassettes are super cool. I really want to see the Ravage. Um, you know, my set didn't come with Ravage, so I have to order the tape, guys. Which my plan of what to do with this right now is to go ahead and order the tape set because I'm just super impressed by the Rumble Bowl. That way I'll get the Frenzy. And I'll get the Ravage, who also looks amazing in pictures. So hopefully he's just as good. I'll also get a bird and a bat. And the bat kind of doesn't look great, but the um, yeah. the bird looks good. I mean, the laser beak and buzz saw mold looks nice in pictures. And I'm kind of planning to just get that and see if I still want to own the sound wave. I might just get rid of him at that point because he's just he's not the he's not the star of the show. It's this little goofy guy here. His hands can even hold his guns. They have little tiny holes. No rest articulation, but little tiny holes. His ankles tilt. It's just preposterous. So, he can look uh, up and down. But th this is one of those things, though. You know, I know that we just got, you know, the Walmart, uh, Walmart announced that Netflix uh exclusive sound wave that is an earthrise version and it comes with well-painted versions of ravage and laser beak so you get pretty much like the main guys that you want um and you know if you didn't pick up the other guys in the set and whatnot and you get one like you get a sound wave that looks right that has good articulation that transforms into a boom box you don't have to worry about it breaking like the only, I guess the only concern I would say is, is what that is, is that there's probably going to be a couple gaps, but there are kits that you can buy to, to fill in those gaps. So I don't know. For me, I think just looking at this, I personally, like for the money, would go with that over, over this, or I might wait for the new age. Like, I don't know. They haven't, I mean, of course, new age is maybe not out for a while, like, I don't think that they've shown any kind of production photos, so it may not be out till next year. Um, but no, they it... just had their kind of um, preview shots, like the models, out yeah. for a while now. Yeah. So I I would think just if it was me, um, and, and again, if I was a Legends collector, what I would probably do if I already had that DX9 one. I probably would just hold on just to see what New Age does, just to, you know, and then kind of make your decision at that point. Um, but, like, it's, it just seems like, you know, based on the review that you're given here, that, you know, it's... Uh-oh. I decided to make an appearance. Oh, okay, there you go. Um... But yeah, it, it just seems like kind of adds up that it's like, you know, unless you're that Legends collector that gets a lot of stuff, um, you know, or you're willing to, to be careful with it, that it seems like that this might be one that's kind of a pass, would you say? Or do, would you still recommend it giving the potential issues? 
I honestly don't recommend it unless you pretty much, unless you hear what I'm saying, you see what I've done with the toy, and you're like, whatever, Anna. I think that's all fine. Then you go get it. But otherwise, I feel like, you know, you might want to wait to see what Magic Square, or what New Age does. I get those two names mixed up all the time. You'd think I didn't know the difference. I'd wait to see what New Age does and then make a decision on which one you like better. Because at least from the, um, not production photos, but from the 3D models that they've put up, um, he looks good. It's just he kind of has the whole visible ball joint thing going in a lot of places, like his um, elbows, which a lot of people hate. I really don't like it. So, you know, that might make this guy better for you. And you just kind of have to make your decision from there. But that, that would be my recommendation, is kind of wait around if you don't mind. And even, like, consider looking at the red when it comes out, the red sound wave, because he might be he might be good enough for you. If you if you hear what I said about not transforming this guy because he's kind of fragile, and you're like, whatever, I don't need to transform him, maybe get the red instead. Well, and that one comes with a, a um, laser beak tape as well, so... Yes. A, I mean, it's a, in tape mode. It's not transforming, but... Yes, a non-transforming laser beak slab. Okay, yeah. so here's a good question from Tony, not about this figure, but about the Hasbro one. Um, Christian, if you're going to get both sound waves and keep both sound waves, the Hasbro ones, would you display the new one as a tape player and the old one in his robot mode, like with the Toy Axe stickers? Or would you... Um, like, do you think you'd get rid of one of them? The Siege one is already in my cell box. There you go. <laughs> wow. Look at you. So what did laser beak and Ravage. I like the, the Earth Mode laser beak head better. That Ravage has better paint apps, so off they go. I feel like that that's kind of the story of Siege, right? Like, at the time that we got a lot of them, we're like, oh, this is fantastic, like, I love it, and whatever. And then Earthrise, like, a bunch of them, they've just given us better figures. Or, or I'm sorry, not necessarily better figures, but, you know, figures that are more accurate to G1 that we like and whatever. And so you're like, okay, well, I, you know, I thought I wanted that, but I actually want this instead. Better figures. Yeah. I, I will. I will bridge that gap. I'd say so. So here, just so any someone asked for the comparison. There's the comparison oh, okay. between the two rumbles. He is much smaller, but not like not like preposterously smaller than the um. He was siege, right? Technically, at this rumble. See, and again, the other trouble that I have, again, with those Legends figures is uh, unless you're taking photos of, like, a battle scene or something like that, or, like, you know, I know that some people in the groups do some fantastic photos of Legends figures. Um, like, if you're just displaying this stuff, like, it's almost too small. You know, that, that Rumble is, I mean, he, lo he seems really cool, but it's like, what the hell are you going to do with a figure that small? No, I agree. I, I think this is finally, like, those Insecticons, when we talked about them, I didn't find myself saying, like, is this too small to matter? I was like, eh, this is fun. It's tiny, but I like it. But this one, I definitely have this moment of, wow, I like this toy. It's so cool. Where did it go? I set it down for a second. Where, how do I, how do I enjoy <laughs> this on the shelf? Because I can't see it. Yeah, I, I feel that way. That's why I said, they didn't really think about should they because it's kind of pointless, but it's amazing. Uh, I know. Well, that that's the thing about all these figures is I feel like it's a marvel of engineering that yeah. they're able to do what they did. Like, you're just like, oh, my God, like this is because like, I felt kind of the same way about a lot of those figures that the amount of like articulation and like all the different cues and whatnot that they're able to fit into figures that small is very impressive and so and i can be impressed and just not buy them yeah i think that might be the right decision when it comes to these guys like i i really want that tape set and i think the tape set if you don't need a sound wave to go with it is probably the right decision because you know just like the um the dx9 tapes were fine 
but they're not that impressive. You know, you get this little dog cat thing. They're not really, they're not much. <laughs> they did the trick. And I don't think that the, um, the current siege tapes are actually impressive either. So if you really want impressive tiny tape guys, these are it. And they're fun. Um, so Randall in the chat was asking, uh, how is he compared to Metroplex? That's actually probably a good question. Oh man! All right. Well, I am roving my camera tonight, so we can go on a little. We can go on a little safari. I get my my headphone tentacle here and try not to let you see too much of my room. Okay. So, um, Tony in the chat was just asking about how much, um, like, if you have toy hack stickers on. A figure like on that sound wave or whatever if you chose to sell them um you know how much it would be worth um i would say in in general that um uh, toy hack stickers usually add nothing to the value of a figure because like as many people that would want it there's also people that want it original and so then they're just gonna have to peel them off or whatever um and so i would say typically like now this isn't always the case um but a lot of times like they just don't really add that much to the value but um i, I don't know how much that sound wave is going on the on the secondary market there might be a little bit of a dip right now just because people selling again same same thing as what you're doing tony where they're considering selling their extras um i would say down the line, I, you know, like as those people kind of cycle through, like you know, that it, it could go back up, but you never know. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to predict value in some of these things. Reaper labels do seem to help with Titans. I've seen. Yeah, that's really the only one where I've seen it add value on a consistent basis. I hope you guys can see the Metroplex. Okay. I tried. I can't see it at all. Sorry, I, I was, I was I talking, so I wasn't paying attention. Well, My maybe, bad. maybe other people saw it. Maybe they didn't. I tried. I tried to show it. I swear. <laughs> so I, I do think that that is the one scenario where, if you have it with the Hasbro Titans, that these the Legends figures like look pretty good with that. Like, if you want to do again, I know Anna, you had mentioned battle scenes and and, and things like that. Um, yeah, that's what my legends are for. My legends are to s display with my titans. So, and they look good together. They look real cool. It makes really fun little battle scenes. Like they're still too big to go with the titans to well, be like actually yeah. to scale or anything. But nothing's ever going to be to scale. Like no, well, not with those guys. Can't make it work. So, but yeah. So, I guess I already gave my final thoughts on this guy. Okay. <laughs> well, Anna, thanks for showing them off. So it was, it was fun to live vicariously through you and, and see kind of what the figure is all about. Um, yeah, and I get to be the most mobile I've ever been on a show. I, I jumped all around right. my room and was extremely unprofessional on camera. You're welcome. There, there you go. It's exciting. So, huh? Christian, I, I guess you probably it. have not been tempted at all to get the. <laughs> I do not collect legends, so I am I'm sitting pretty. Oh, one thing I do also want to mention is Iron Factory is supposed to be coming out with a new sound wave as well. Uh, this based on more of the IDW representation. I mean, it's still it's going to be kind of like the stylized Iron Factory figure. Um, so, you know, that's another option. Um, you know, should you choose to go that route? So there's there's you know always plenty of sound waves out there. There are, and that's the thing with this whole, like, comparison and discussion is you probably already have a sound wave you like. <laughs> you know, I do. I have several I like already, and then there's this guy, and he's fine. His button doesn't press down. It doesn't work, just in case you wanted to know. I'm sure you totally cared. Oh, man. I mean, that just ruins it for me, and I was the thinking about getting out. It. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm out now. Oh, so. This button does nothing. Does mm. I'm pressing it. Nothing. So, so sad. Like yeah. Seth's stupid in his chest, but 
you know, someone asked if the siege size cassettes would fit inside of him. They do not. They're half his body. <laughs> so, no. So. All right, so this is fun. Um. Anything else, anyone? Yeah. Yeah, so Tony, I think, uh, so Magic Square, uh, he was asking whether or not they're making figures in multiple sizes. Um, so in general, this is true of all Legends figures. Like, they have all been growing in size as they go along. <laughs> so, like, literally every company, I think, has increased the size. Um, like, I don't know, I guess New Age kind of is... It, they've kept it somewhat consistent, I guess, because their smaller figures that they came out with originally like are supposed to be small. It's like deluxe, the like the cars and, and whatever. And so then they came out with some of the Voyager scale figures, or you know the the larger like the Seekers and whatnot, and Megatron. So um, they, I think they've actually been somewhat consistent with their sizing, um, but. I think what he was asking about was how Magic Square made one MP scale figure. They made just that Optimus Prime. Uh oh. Which I talked about at length because it's very, very good. Whereas their their normal legend size Optimus Prime is not nearly as good. <laughs> so no, they haven't done that again. But you know who has is New Age put out their one masterpiece scale figure, which just happens to be Soundwave, the other Soundwave, the movie Soundwave. From the movie, yeah, movie Soundwave. Yeah. So they went ahead and did that. So now New Age has done the same thing where they've produced one full-scale masterpiece figure and then a whole bunch of legends. But it seems like it's a little bit different of a situation, though. Like, I almost kind of feel like Magic Square with the Optimus, like, that they, they kind of saw an opportunity that they're like, oh, like, let's create two very similar figures and, you know, do it two different sizes just to see how, like the economics work and if people like it and you know whatever um but uh but yeah like i, I don't know if if new age is trying to diversify their line and you know because they all of their legends figures have all been um you know of the g1 stuff whereas like you know this was their first movie figure and it's a larger size so yeah i'm not sure where it came from other than if it was literally just they saw a gap they were like, nobody had made a good masterpiece-style yeah. movie sound wave yet, so let's just make them before anyone else does. Throw them out that there and keep be. on moving. And you know what might get people more interested, too? Like, they buy that, and they're like, what else does this new age company make? What? Tidy Insecticons? This is crazy. And then they buy them. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. Um, but anyway, so. Yeah, All right, well. Fine. That's what it is. Um, I did want to mention tomorrow night uh, we are having Ouch My Wallet. Um, so Rob is going to be hosting that. That is on the YouTube page at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. So check us out and see what uh, goodies that we've all gotten in the last couple weeks um, besides the Magic Square figures. Um, and, uh, yeah, cut the tape on Friday. Uh, last night on TFLP, we talked about the new version or, or the um, the new set of uh, the War for Cybertron uh, trilogy, which is uh, Kingdom. Uh, so we kind of talked about what Beast Wars figures are rumored, what we'd like to see, and all that type of thing. So uh, check that out as well. Um, and uh, I think that's it. If you want to continue the conversation, uh, join us uh, in the Discord. Uh, should be posted all over the place with the link but if you need it we'll you know let us know on the facebook page and uh we'll get it for you um thank you to everyone in the chat that participated uh tony randall um rob i think did i miss any brick sean um so thank you everyone uh that joined and any anything else we want to add before we go thanks enjoy your toys all right. Thanks, everyone. Love, love, we'll love. see you next week. Wave with legs.